So today this is the uh, sort of first part in a little series of videos I want to do about sort of the differences, similarities, and it's a bit of a versus, you know, which is better for which, um, videos about route tables and spindle moulders, or if you're not in the UK, you might call them shapers. Um, I think that's like a few countries called shapers. Um, so this video today is going to specifically look at one process, and that is running a profile down the length of the grain of a piece of timber. Um, so that could be sort of like a classic moulding, you know, like a decorative moulding. Could be something like running, you know, like a piece of skateboard, like a torus moulding or an OG moulding. It might be just putting a groove in for a shaker door. You know, you're still essentially making a profile or rebating if you're making, say, a window or rebating for a door that's going to have glass in it. Um, anything which involves cutting a shape into the cross-sectional profile of a piece of wood and doing it along the direction of the grain. Um, so, just for an example today, I hope the camera see this, we're going to use this here. This is like a real classic beading detail in the UK, I use this a lot. Um, if you imagine there's sort of a door inside this, it's like a classic cabinet profile, small, small bead, little flat quirk on the bottom, um, and then the round over goes into the edge. So, you know, this is a moulding that I've run up um, for a job this week on, on the spindle moulder, but you could equally produce this on a route table. So this is something that's really comparable. Um, so let's have a little look at what's different about them um, and why. So for this kind of job, I'd personally say that a spindle moulder would be the more appropriate tool, um, but we can sort of look at why that should be the case. Um, so this is what's called a, a euro block in the UK, I'm not sure what it's called in other parts of the world, but essentially it is a spindle moulder cutter head. It's got a bore, it's a head, and it can take various cross-sectional knives for cutting out different profiles. So hopefully, let's see if we get that against the white, you can see there, and the reason you've got knives top and bottom is essentially you can get two, you know, two uses out of a single set of knives between sharpening, so you can flip that over. So this head spins like this, and just for the sake of this video, I've taken these out. Normally you'll have a thing called a limiter, which is the exact same, and that would go in where this blank currently is, and back up the cut, and what that does is that limits how deep you can take a cut out each time, and that's a safety feature. And it also helps control pe uh, stopping people from feeding too fast as well, but um, it's mainly safety and always use these. As I say I took them out because the camera really struggled to focus when you had two identical profiles in front of each other, but hopefully you can see that. So that there is about sort of five inches across. And then we also have here, this is a router cutter made by a company in the UK called Wilden, who do some really good knock product cutters. And hopefully you can see that is the exact same profile again so you can either one of these would be suitable for cutting that exact same shape you're going to get the same profile at the end two means of doing the same thing but i would tend to always use a spindle molder in this situation and the reason really is down to the way the cutters work themselves so i've just roughly sketched out here a couple of cutters and um, for the sake of simplicity i've used round numbers i haven't even bothered measuring the exact amounts but let's say this is in the route table and we're looking down on the cutter so this is the router cutter and for argument's sake we said it's 50 mil across two inches it probably won't be as big as that but that's about as big as most router cutters are likely to ever get and then looking down on the spindle molder we've got a similar cutter same profile um, but it's about sort of five inches across 125 mil across now the big difference with both of these when you're feeding the timber into them is the actual depth that the cut set is going to be the same. So in this case, we said let's say 12 mil. You know, let's say a cut of a profile of 12 millimeters. So both of these cutters are projecting past this fence. So this part here is the fence, and this part here is the fence. So you can see this here. This is the fence going through. Both cutters are poking out past the front of the face. So this is the person stood here. And there you go. Some arms and a head. Um, and they're going to be pushing the cutter this way because the cutter's rotating this way, so they're pushing into the cutter. On all of these, the cutter projection is the same because we're making the same depth of moulding, the same depth of profile. But what is very different between this cutter and this cutter is the angle at which the cutter exits the cut. So this being a much smaller diameter, 
as the cup goes around, by the time it's poking through the back of the fence, this angle is quite steep. So the cut is going back through here. This is this point here as it's leaving the back of the cut of the piece of wood. So this is looking down this piece of wood. And as you can see here, these are, this is like my attempt at doing some wood grain fibres, some wood grain, these green lines. This is the fibre. And so when this cutter comes into contact with these fibres, it's pushing very close to perpendicular against the back of the cut. And what that's going to do is that's going to make these fibres do this. They're going to want to splinter out. Now you're going to lose a lot of that as you go down the cut, but where you won't lose it will be at the bottom of the quirk of the cut. So, for example, just at this point here, you'll get fuzzing, and you won't get as clean a cut coming through because it's exiting. Now, the same cut done on the, rep on the uh, spindle moulder, because this cut is much bigger, is much larger, when it leaves the cut at this point here, it's going to be a much shallower angle. So, you know, this is going to be coming out quite steep like this. This is going to be coming out quite shallow like this. And so what you're going to get is when this comes into the fibres, rather than it trying to flick these out like this, it's going to be pushing back into the fibres behind it. So the fibres at the back of the cut are supporting the cut as it goes through. And when it does come through and exit out the back, it's coming at such a shallow angle, you only get very little bit of breakout here. And so you get a much more supported cut because the cut is pushing into more timber as it makes the cut. And that's the big thing that makes the difference. Now this particular kitchen is being made out of a coil because it's quite a damp old house and it stops things moving as much. Now a lot of people might not have used it, but a coil is a really brittle timber. It's almost glass-like, you know, it's very, very brittle. And so in this kind of situation, you get a lot of fine splintering and that means a lot of remedial work. You know, you're going to be... I mean, this is being painted, so it could have a little bit of filling and it wouldn't really be the end of the world. But you're essentially creating yourself work that you don't need to. Um, so that's one way that uh, the way a spindle moulder cuts is very different to the way that a route table cuts, even doing the same process. So this isn't looking at what things we can do differently on each machine, you know, what one can do that another can't. This is just looking at the way that they interact with the timber when they cut and how that process varies from a spindle moulder with a much wider cut path and a much shallower angle exit in the timber and a router doing the exact same process with a much smaller cut path, smaller circumference, smaller diameter cutter taking a much steeper exit out the back of the timber and how that varies and how that makes a difference on your finish. So that's one good example of where doing the exact same process the spindle mould is generally going to give you a better finished result straight off the machine prior to sanding and finishing than the route table. I hope that makes sense. If there's any questions, uh, feel free to pop them in the comments. And we're going to try and think probably three or four parts to this. We'll look at some processes that you can do on a spindle moulder that you can't do on a router table, and vice versa. There's some things that you can do on a router table that you won't be able to do on a spindle. Um, and look at some other ways where some things are sometimes better done on one machine than the other. You know, I think in this particular example, although the spindle moulder wins out, there's lots of examples when a router table might be a better solution for some people. So. Um, yeah, hopefully you enjoyed that and it's been some use and uh, I'll get another one done sometime soon, hopefully. Thanks so much. Bye.